Entrepreneurship is hard, so let's fix that and dive into our hero's journeys. This is Taking Flight, an entrepreneur's journey, and I'm Sarah Torville. Join me as we delve deep into the passions, expertise, and experiences of those already in flight. This show is sponsored by EO Atlanta. Hello and welcome, everybody. So um, we have a the weeks fly by, and then I get so excited because I know then I realize I have another amazing guest who's about to join us to really fill up all our knowledge um, and to help give us inspiration of what it takes to run a business. So um, today's guest is no different. I'm really excited to have him on the show. Uh, he is a 15 year veteran in software engineering. He's also an Emmy award winning software engineer. He strives to change the world of technology and has been a CTO at multiple technology companies. Partner of R&Y Labs, Randy Etheridge, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Sarah. It's great to be here. Big fan. I've been listening since you launched it and uh, just super excited to be here. So thank you for all the work you put into it. You're welcome, Randy. And it's so nice to hear you say that. And I love the fact, I really feel like the EO Atlanta podcast is getting traction. And more importantly, it's becoming, like I say, a resource that people listen to when they're driving, you know, to clients, to the office. And it's like, I said, it's just, uh, that's its purpose. Its purpose is to give us the knowledge and the tips um, so that we can all build our businesses effectively. So that's great. And it's serving that purpose very well. So thank you so much. (laughs) Thank you for saying that. Okay. So let's get going. And we always jump into this most important question around what did you get right, Randy, when you took your first flight into your entrepreneurial journey? I've been trying to think of what my answer was going to be, knowing it was coming, again, being a fan of the show. And honestly, the the thing that kept coming to mind for me was having a partner in the business. Um, I know certain entrepreneurs that I've met in the past, like they couldn't do the partnership thing. They they need to be the 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 they need to be the boss. They need to be the person. They they don't want to have to run it past you. Part of being an entrepreneur is that resistance to um, authority and and being able to do it, you know, cut your own path, right? But for me, I really, really thrive on collaboration. And so I don't think that I would have been able to produce the results in my business the way that I have without that person to be a, a sounding board to lift me up in low times for me to lift them up in low times and just uh, know that we're, we're on this journey together. It's it, it, it always helps me push harder knowing that someone else is yeah. uh, is attached to the success I'm seeking. Yeah, that's so true. Okay, so you found a business partner very, very early on. Can you just mm-hmm. talk to me about um, how you did that? I mean, was it just a natural collaboration? Like, what did it look like? It was very natural. So prior to really, so I I, I always joke that I started my business, RMI Labs, on accident. I was doing side work that I needed an LLC for. And so um, doing that side work, um, I was working with a lot of different startups, all various stages, right, from small to to, to large. And um, several times I'd run into this person, my business partner is Calvin Yu, and and we'd be working on partner or we'd be working on uh, projects together. And, um, you know, one day we were sitting at lunch and we were just talking about the constant you know, struggles that we see, like the patterns that emerge right. when people are trying to launch a software product or a technology product. And we we sat there at that launch and said, man, we should get out in front of it and try to try to help, try to try to stop this problem before it starts, right? Because we were most of the projects we were in were rescue work, right? We were coming in to try to take something that had gone off the rails and get it back on the rails and really right. um structure it better. And so that one thing led to another and uh, he bought in for 50%. And you know, that was very early on prior to it. It was just me kind of solo, uh, solopreneur, really just a job more than a business. And then, right. you know, hire a few people and it turns into a business. <laughs> How long ago was that when you first got together with Calvin? So I started the business in 2015, again, the LLCs in 2015. Yeah. Um, it really became a business 2017, 2018, right. uh, around that time frame. That's when Calvin came into the business and we really started tackling this problem together. Right. Okay. That's so great. Yeah. There's a lot to be said for business partnerships, isn't there? And it's interesting the number of people I have on our show, I would say majority are in business with somebody else. Mm-hmm. And then you get a few who just, it, this is not right for them. They realize that they do way better on their own. And mm-hmm. so, so um, but I would say the majority, 
I think it's, I've done both personally. I've done in business and on my own. And um, I think it's really nice knowing that someone else is caring about the business just as much as you are. Yeah. And before EO, I didn't have any outlet for the struggles that I had in running the business, right? Like my business partner was what now EO is for me, which are the kind of problems that you can't talk about. You know, the, oh man, why is AR lagging? What do we, you know, where's the next deal flow coming from? Like, how do we, are we going to get our act together? Those are all things that you're not going to talk to your friends and family about. You're not going to talk to others that aren't entrepreneurs about. And uh, honestly, that fact is what brought me to EO, right? That, that, that need to, to sort of share experiences. And um, yeah. uh, prior to that, I got it from my business partner. I still do. Um, yeah. Obviously. Yeah. yeah but no, you're EO, right. That's all I had. Yeah. <laughs> and I used to give mine all to my husband and he'd be like, I don't want to hear this. <laughs> it's, like, it's 11 o'clock at night, Sarah. And I'm like, I know, but I'm trying to fix a problem. So, um, <laughs> So who are or were your co-pilots on this journey? Obviously, Calvin. Calvin. Is it Calvin or Kelvin? I want to make sure I'm saying his name right. It's Calvin. Yeah. Calvin. Okay. So yep. obviously he has been mm-hmm. a major co-pilot, um, but is there anyone else? And I'd love to know like who they are and, and why they've been so important. Absolutely. I mean, Calvin, for sure, for, for obvious reasons. Um uh, various mentors um, that, that I mean, the person who introduced me to uh, to, to EO was uh, CBQ. So he had a, um, right. uh, a a similar type business. And then he sold that to, uh, I believe, Big Nerd Ranch, and then he became CEO over there. And I met him around that time period and was talking with him about some of the struggles that we were having in, in early on, like trying to get traction around certain things. He goes, have you heard of EO? And, uh, you know, from there, uh, it was just you know, kind of took off, right? Because I had that guidance and that sort of push. Yeah. Um, uh, my wife, uh, she's she's had to, just like you were saying with your husband, she's had to endure, you know, the good and the bad, uh, everything okay. in between that comes with being an entrepreneur. And she's, uh, she, she's always been very supportive. And yeah. her favorite thing now is uh, if I come to her and I've, I've had a long day or I'm stressed or, you know, she can tell, uh, yeah. she, she's like, so, and I'll try to describe, this is what happened or that's what happened. She goes, so you're yeah. going to, When's your next forum meeting? When are you <laughs> <laughs> so similar to your husband, she yeah. she wants to help, but you know it's it's tough for for folks who who aren't in this and, and don't uh, who yeah. don't you know, but they they know that this is such a powerful thing. So um, it's just really funny to hear her say that. I share that with my forum; they all laugh. Yeah, that's I bet they all laugh. And I met your wife on Port, in Puerto Rico when we went and did that amazing trip um and i think it's great that this obviously spouse i love that about eo obviously this is not meant to be a plug for eo per se but the spouse was for you know they even have a spouse forum and you can your spouses can be you know be involved to understand mm-hmm. the power of eo and what their role can be so it's um you know it's it's just incredible in in many yeah. respects so i'm glad you've had a whole series of different people around you and and that mentorship which is um exceptional so what is a challenge, uh, Randy, that you're having to really do and solve right now? Well, for the business itself, the, the the challenging thing for us is is really that model for for scale because the types. Right. So, what our business does is we offer very specialized expert level uh, consulting on product and engineering. So. Um, the the types of individuals that we need on our team to help our clients be successful because we're setting we're not just like trying to fill seats and and get engineers on projects we're actually trying to come in and really help set strategy really make sure that expectations are set make sure that there's 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 a good product feedback loop everything that's needed for a really strong product and engineering organization to be successful and the types of individuals that have those skill sets are um, they're very rare and and tough to uh, tough to find. And so uh, yes. the challenge that we think through is just what model for scale makes the most sense for us, right? right. Um, it's it's not I, I don't I don't mean to suggest that other uh, firms like ours are it's more obvious, but for us, at least it seems less obvious because we can't just go hire a bunch of engineers and that's our pathway to scale, right? We're right. really looking for, a bunch of needles, uh, needles in, a, in, in several haystacks, and so, um, and they're expensive, right? So, yeah. making sure that we're we're setting our um, uh, setting our pricing accordingly to to everything that we're providing to uh, to scale and, and really create value. Like um, the number one thing that people get to know about me pretty quickly is I'm all about value. 
mm-hmm. and chasing that value. And that's what I want for my, my for our clients, right? I want them to be able to uh, maximize the value that their idea, their product, whatever they're trying to accomplish can, can create for both the business and the customers that they serve. Right. And so it's really important to me that we scale in a way that still creates the maximum value we possibly yeah. can, which yeah. is not always easy. Challenging, no. Um, and just a, a clarifying question before I ask you a deeper question to what you just said. When you say value to a lot of people's minds actually does come price point, mm-hmm. meaning, meaning maybe a better value, a cheaper value. But I don't think that's what you're talking about. You're talking about like being a significant contributor to the clients that you're working with, correct? Absolutely. We want yeah. to come in and any, you know, when I, when I say chasing value, it's really the ROI side of it, right? Yeah. Um, as I just alluded to, it's it's expensive, right, to find yeah. the types of people that can really execute well in this. But the beauty of um, our organization is you can get that fractional support. You don't need that full time uh-huh. role to do some of these things. You can get that fractional support mm-hmm. exactly tuned to your needs. Mm-hmm. And my goal is to maximize the ROI. I want a three and five X that ROI. Yeah. So if you spend, you know, twenty thousand dollars with us, I, I want that to be able to create, you know, a hundred, yeah. you know, yeah. Uh, yeah. hundred like plus. So. Yeah. That's the value I'm looking for. Right. Got it. That, that's very helpful. And so how are you doing that? Because I think the challenge you're going through is a challenge, particularly agencies go through. And I regard mm-hmm. my company as an agency. It's like, yeah, how do you how do you scale where well, you're looking for expert people who probably care as much as you do? Maybe, 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 not, maybe not quite as much, but just about mm-hmm. um, who are really, really good. And then you got to find lots of them. So what are you doing to do that? Well, I wish I could say I've got it all figured out and it's turnkey and it's all going great. But uh, yeah. honestly, it's just a lot of uh, a lot of uh, grassroots, right? You've you've just really got to go out there and network. You've got to get to know uh, yeah. the people. You've got to ask, right? So we have we're lucky enough, Calvin and I. We've we've been doing this for 15, 20 years and um, we've we've established a pretty strong network around us, right? And so we're constantly looking, even when we don't need the extra capacity, we're just yeah. always constantly looking, right? And, yeah. you know, we've used recruiters in the past to try to, to find some of these individuals um, and um, we've had varying degrees of success. And the only thing that we know that really works is just pounding the streets and- yeah doesn't scale, but really in, in, in reality, those types of individuals that we need, um, they are our pathway to scale, but we don't need to bring on 10 or 15 of them a year, like right. one or two per year would give us the, 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 the scaled growth that we want to have because right. they're each one of those individuals are X factors for, because we do do implementation. So we do have teams that are out there implementing the software right. and those, um, those individuals, um, are, more traditional engineers that we can go in, uh, go into our network or go into our virtual bench and really pull either subcontractors out or you know make some uh, make some full time hires there as needed. Uh, mm-hmm. But it's those key people, almost you know think of like an account manager right in the agency world, an account yeah. manager, but like has a, a strong technical background along with product, right? Because we yeah. need we need product engineering leadership really in yeah. what we do because we're our our thesis is. If those aren't unified, working well together, then you can't really create the kind of value that we want to help our customers create. Yeah, yeah. And how involved do you have to get? I mean, maybe it comes down to the the quality of the person you find, but how involved right now are you kind of in the business? Because it's always hard. I mean, I, and I read the reason why I ask that as, as I run an agency myself. And there's that level of you've got to make sure that the client, you, first of all, you've got to make sure you really feel like you can trust this person, mm-hmm. let them loose on your client, are going to offer the right advice. And then you've got to let them go. But it takes time, doesn't it, to be able to feel comfortable that they can do that. Absolutely. And we, we've always had a concept with um, from the from the very moment that we 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 sort of started thinking about our culture and and the, the the way that we'd like to see things get built out. And uh, at that level that I'm talking about where these really, really seasoned um, uh, product engineering folks are, are, are at, it's almost like a council. And so right. the goal is, is that even though your responsibilities may be with a single uh, customer or client that everybody you have access to, to that whole sort of council to be able to execute on helping solve that 
problem so that you right. don't just get the mind and the capacity and the resources of, of, of that one individual, but you really have a council of, of folks that are looking to solve those big, 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 huge problems, right? So right. maybe for the day-to-day -day stuff, they're good operating, it's all going, but for the areas where you say it's tough to let go, um, our goal is to, in, instead of just completely letting go, just make sure that everyone knows that there's this you know, you can, you, you can bring the council. I, I don't know if you, if you watch uh, Ted Lasso, but it's almost like the, uh, the, 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 oh, yeah, the three people at the, the top. Well, no, the dog, the, when, whenever oh. they, they're talking about um, their, their, their girl friends and things like that, they bring yeah. the, the dogs. I forget the name of it, but the, yes, yes, the, I do know what you mean. Yeah. The council <laughs> together where they're all uh, howling dogs and barking and stuff. Yes. <laughs> yes. When you need it, you call it and it's there for you and it's there to support you and make sure that we're able to maximize that value kind of across the board. Yeah. Didn't <laughs> they do that with example? I remember one example, they were, they were talking about um, the type of aftershave a man should wear. So they brought the dog in as the person to kind of be part of that conversation or Whatever, yeah. Yep. <laughs> but bringing in the, yeah, making sure you got strong people and someone else on in the team to help make good decisions, and um, and obviously you've got to be hands on, but not so hands on. You got to allow people to do their job too. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think that's one of the hardest and most important parts of being a good leader is giving people the space they need to find their way and you know, know that if they fail, you've got to be there to help pick yeah. them up. That's what we do yeah. as leaders, right? And yeah. and uh, uh, I always I always say like it's not about failing, it's about learning. And so if something wasn't successful, take the learnings from that and apply it. Um, yeah. But we do our best not to repeat the same mistakes. That's kind of a pet peeve of mine. It's like, yeah. it's fine to make mistakes, but if it's repetitive, then, yeah, then that's not cool. Change it. No. Yeah. yeah. We have the same philosophy at Media Frenzy. It's just like, you know, ask me, a, you know, ask me a question and I'll tell you, give you the answer once, once, ask me a question, same question, and I don't want to repeat it second time round. And it's the same with like making errors. It's like, you just got to fix it and move on. Yep. So, um, so that's great. So what about a favorite book? Is there anything you're reading right now, Randy, that, or something you've read in the past that you think was a game changer to how you built your business? I tell you what, um, extreme ownership, um, that comes to mind, just, um, that, that mentality of really owning and really pushing, yourself to be, you know, to be that leader. Uh, yeah. That was a really, really, I think the message in that book was great. I think it was delivered well. I think it was interesting because, you know, it's written by Navy SEALs. So there's like that, that component to it as well, where it's, it's yeah. exciting as you're reading it. Yeah. Um, yeah. That was great. Some others in my repertoire uh, on the, on the engineering, like product and engineering side, really like inspired by Marty Keegan. That was a really okay. great one. Um, there's several authors to this um, book, but um, it, it's called Accelerate, and it's it's mm -hmm. a really data driven uh, book around how to build and scale product engineering organizations. Uh, yeah. Very very well done. Um, they did they, they they put a lot of time and research into that book, and so it's it's pretty dense. But right. if you're a product and engineering leader, it's it's a good one. Okay, so you know, can I just ask you, what is the author of Extreme Ownership? I know you mentioned it was written by a Navy SEAL. What's the person's name? Uh, I want to say it's uh, Leaf. Um, I, I'm going to blank on the on their names, but okay. um, uh, I wish I, I wish I could remember off the top of my head his uh, the the the, the, the it, it's written by a couple of folks. They're both Navy SEALs, but okay. if you type in an Extreme, I will order, Google it in a minute while you're talking and see if I can find it. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> okay. And then Accelerate. Do you happen to know the the name of that author? There's several authors to that one. So okay. I think three or four people contributed to that one. Okay. I can't remember off the, the, okay. the top of my head. Okay. I will take a look in a minute. So, but thank you. That's three really good books. Mm -hmm. um, Extreme Ownership I've heard is particularly good. I need to check that one out. So what excites you about your future flight? Um. Man, so many things. Um, you know, one of the things that gets me up every day, and I, I think it, I hope anyhow, but I, I'm pretty sure it goes throughout the rest of our team here, is um, is just seeing these products come to life that you had such a significant part in it, right? I can look around specifically Atlanta because we we do a lot of fintech, right? We, we sort of specialize in fintech. And so okay. I look around at, you know, some of the fintech um products that are out there now that we've had a, a part in. And it's just like, wow, this is making an impact. It's making a difference. And um, I think 
that ability to continue to do that and continue to build a practice around, you know, excellence and 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 contributing to right our our goal is to 10x, like our BHAG, if you will, is to yeah. uh, 10x increase the probability that a product has a chance to find product market fit, right? So we right. we we want to really chase that value and 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 see it. And so maybe one day we're the de facto technology, you know, product technology uh, development firm and at least the Southeast, but maybe the world. Yeah. I love it. That's an exciting goal. Um, and fintech is forever changing constantly. Um, Absolutely. I, I find it very interesting as well, coming from the UK and seeing how fintech is in Europe and then coming to the US and actually seeing how far behind we are, mm-hmm. particularly from Asia. And so as a, I suppose you're helping, maybe you're helping the industry catch up. Maybe you're going to help the US lead the charge. I don't know. I mean, like you That's said, the, goal. the future's bright. I love that. The goal, especially here in Atlanta, Transaction Alley, they call it. Yeah. So um, the, the more that we can continue to do for the ecosystem, the better it's going to be for Atlanta, better for the ecosystem. And like you said, better to, to help us catch up. I think there's a, a lot of opportunity of, of yeah. work to be done here. No, definitely. That's really good. So who are you, Randy? So like pre-flight, what, what, what were some key milestones that happened to you before you, 2015, you actually started like the day job? Well, I um, kind of a traditional path. I got a software engineering degree from Georgia Tech in 2008, um, went into the industry, uh, worked for a software company. It was an enterprise software company. And so uh, I traveled around to where they sold the software into, and I built the components of the product that the salespeople sold that the product didn't do. Um, right. So that was that was very interesting. Um, got tired of the travel, settled down, if you will, went to work at Turner Broadcast or yeah. they are now Warner Brother Max. HBO and a half, whatever their name is these days, but uh, they've gone through a, a few identities since my time there. But I, I came in to um, help build a, a mobile and connected devices team there um, and uh, did something similar at Vonage. And then after that, jumped into the, uh, it was after Vonage that I jumped into the startup world. Uh, did my first uh, tech startup and uh, after um, after that, went into this consulting and uh, just been doing it, being been doing that ever since. That's wonderful. So has there been a particular software tool either before you did your own business or or since that you're most proud of? Oh man. Sorry, that was, I just threw that question in, but I had had no idea that the level of type of software development you do, because I find FinTech extremely interesting. Um, Yeah, I don't know. That's an extremely tough one. I love all my kids equally. Um, (laughs) (laughs) I will say in my career, probably the the hardest thing I ever worked on uh, was actually uh, due to time constraints and things like that was actually the the Team Coco app because we were building in this new technology that allowed audio fingerprinting to happen on iPads, which back then weren't all that powerful compared to what they are now. And so we were really, really pushing the bounds of what those devices could do. So that came with a lot of challenges. And it really, every day, I, I mean, I was pulling all-nighters to because there was a deadline associated yeah. with it. As there yeah. tends to be with media-driven things. Um, yeah. But that one is probably the one that sticks out to me the most, just because it was a lot of sleepless nights. But the reward at the end was just amazing to to build right. this new category of, of application. Right. Fantastic. Thank you for sharing that. So I'm just looking at your co-founder and CTO at Split. Was that the um was that the pay- payment technology where you could split a um your your bill, your check mm-hmm. at a restaurant? Okay. Correct. Mm-hmm. I think I might have met your co-founder many many years ago when I was involved with um Tech Square Labs and things happening at Georgia Tech as mm-hmm. well. So You probably did. There were four of us total, so it was okay. um um, uh, it was, I, I don't know if I want to name names on, on the podcast. No, you don't have to do that. Okay. But uh, you probably did. <laughs> okay. And yeah, I probably and I was, know who it was. <laughs> okay. So, that, and then now we have what split wise, what is the, yeah, split wise. Well, those are completely separate. So split wise is, uh, it was like an offline. It was just a way to do the math. Whereas yeah. split was an actual, we were integrated with the POS systems. And yeah. so we built this technology product around being able to, um, you see it now everywhere. We were, we, we'd like to say now that we were way ahead of ourselves. Um, you were. Of I agree market. you were. Yeah. Um, if we would have done that even just four or five years ago, it would have been yeah. a completely different um, uh, outcome uh, for, right. for how much the adoption would have, would have taken off. But 
it was an actual integrated technology. Yeah. Um, in, in our humble opinion, the better of, of all of them to be able yeah. to, to have that experience of, of splitting a tab and just paying and leaving and making life easier. Yeah, that's, that was incredible that you, I'd had no idea that you were behind that. Mm-hmm. Congratulations. So I think you probably Thank you know, you. Help, help to educate the market on what was possible, even if you were ahead of the curve. Now you bring all of that to your clients, which I think, exactly. is, yeah, which is which at the end of the day is, is what kind of the giving back and is all about, but it's also is what's going to make your company even more exceptional. So um, that's great. I had no idea. Sorry. I just suddenly I thought, yeah, I remember going out for lunch with somebody at Split. So, so what problem do you solve and what impact have you made like currently, like with the business? What do you think, you know? Tell me a little bit more about, if, even from down to like a consumer level, what problem do you think you solve? Well, down to consumer level, it's really a function of the products that we work on. So that could vary. Sometimes it's, you know, like, you, you know, splitting uh, bills at the table. Sometimes it's better management of your finances. Sometimes it's powering investment platforms. So the value, that's right. the cool thing is like, because of the variety of customers and clients that we support, um, we create a bunch of different kind of value for the end consumer. But mm-hmm. the real value creation that that we create, I think, as a business is the ability to sort of de-stress your tech, right? It's right. just like, Um, anybody that's been a part of building a technology product, especially if they're not technical and even those that are technical, right? It is, it is, um, it is a challenge because of how quickly technology evolves the variety, you know, the, just the sheer amount of different ways that there are to accomplish something. It's just like, what's the best way. And the beauty of us having done this over 30, 40 times now is that we've seen this movie, yeah. over and over again. And so we, we, at any stage, basically any stage for ICPs, once they get, you know, to a certain size, that's a whole different ball game in terms of the, the type of businesses that they are. But for SMBs, which is our core, yeah. um, the problems that they solve are, are, are challenging. And, and sometimes it's technology driven and sometimes it's process driven and sometimes it's organizationally driven. And, and by being able to come in and take a holistic approach to it, we can create that value deeper down the chain. And, yeah. and so that's really the value that, that I think we bring. So okay. I like to tell people if, if you know somebody that feels that they are stressed with their tech, yeah, uh, I like that. Give us a call. We're a help first company, even if we're not yeah. the best yeah. solution. We'd love to have that conversation and, and help them find the best solution. I love that. De-stress the tech. Okay. There's a lot of people stressed with technology and I think it's going to get even more complicated with AI and all those other different contributions oh, yes. coming in. A new buzzword I heard the other day is no longer we're we talking about transformation, digital transformation. We're talking about transmutation. So it's like, what is, you know, I don't know what that looks like, Randy, but um, yeah, who knows? <laughs> but the world the world is, is going to be, you know, very different, very fast. Um, yes. just, but it already has been. You look back and people people talk about this, this, you know, AI reach penetration really, really quick in terms of other products that have ever hit the market. Mm-hmm. But um, you can see similar revolutions like that just so quickly and under such a short time span, just because, as I mentioned, time, um, I'm, I'm sorry, technology just really, really um, changes quickly. Yeah. Yeah. There is just such a fast transition from what's cutting edge today, you know, yes. and cutting edge to, you know, in six months could be two different things. Oh, very much so. I completely agree. So yeah, it's crazy. So would you do this all over again, Randy? If you had, if you had to do it all over again, would you? Absolutely. Um, uh, and, and being able to go into it with lessons learned would, would, would be amazing, right? All the yeah. things I didn't know then that I know now, um, uh, I, I wouldn't give it up for anything. I'm very passionate about the, the the things that we're able to create. I'm very passionate about the the organization and, and and everything. And I just couldn't imagine, I couldn't imagine not doing it. Yeah, yeah, that's really good. And you know, you're in the right place, which is great. So, um, and tell me a little bit about what do you do outside of work? Just curious, you know, beyond. <laughs> I'm sure you spend a lot of time building amazing technology and solutions, but what else? I know it's it, it sounds cliche, but a lot of my time outside of work is just doing more work. But it's fun for me that I, I have the luxury of loving what I do, and it can be a hobby as much as it can be a work. So, whether it's exploring new technologies or or uh, whatever the case may be, or new trends, or trying to just learn and, and gain knowledge, all of those things uh, take place. And if there's such thing as after hours when it comes to being an entrepreneur, but um, 
outside of that, I really love cooking. So um, uh, okay. barbecuing, uh, my happy place is when I have the time for it, just sitting out next yeah. to uh, to a grill or a smoker and just mm-hmm. you know watching the fire and 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 hopefully at the end of eight to ten to twelve hours have some delicious food to to share with others. And um, uh, I just uh, I don't know. I, that's that's that that's probably okay. my uh, that's probably my meditation. Yeah. <laughs> No, and I and I saw the photos of what you cooked on Saturday. Oh um, yeah, those, yes. those photos made it out. There we go. They made it out. They're on the WhatsApp EO comp. I think one of the EO channel WhatsApp. Yes, I, that was made, a great time. It was, it was a video. It was the video of you actually unpacking these ribs, and they. Oh like, yeah, that's right. That's right. Incredible. We did get a video of that. That, that was yeah. a lot of fun. Uh, fun fact: that's the that is officially the largest crowd that I've ever personally um, uh, cooked for. So okay. that was, that's a new checkbox for me. Yes, you um, did it. And it looked a great time. That's good. I wish, I wish I'd gone. I had things going on, but. It I didn't help thought- that it was on the other side of the lake. I know it was yeah. a lot of people. I wanted to be able to, I have a boat, which I'm learning to drive, but I was like, you know what, Sarah, I think I'm overdoing it. I should have just driven there with my car, but in the end, <laughs> But next we'll do it time. again. Yeah. There was enough excitement around this that we we think it's something that's that's fun, and uh, okay. we we're already talking about next year. Okay, very good. I love that. Okay, so where can people find you, Randy? What's the best way for them to connect with you? Uh, LinkedIn, uh, Randy Etheridge on LinkedIn. Um, uh, other than that, Randy at rylabs.io. Um, those are the two uh, the the two spots. I'm an inbox zero person as well. Um, I may not get back to you immediately, but you can rest assured that I read it within the the last 24 hours. Okay. (laughs) Very cool. Okay. Well, thank you so much. And actually before we, I did find out the author of the book that we were speaking about, Mm -hmm. I wanted to share it with everyone. So extreme ownership, as you said, written by Navy SEALs and you said leaf, leaf Babin and Jocko Willink. There we go. Jocko Willink. Yep. If I'm pronouncing it correctly. So I think um, yeah, if anybody wants to go check out those books, I just had a look. They are on Amazon. Of course they are. Um, <laughs> sounds like it's definitely worth reading. But um, this has been a great conversation. Thank you so much, Randy, for sharing your passions actually with us. And it's lovely to hear you talk about what you do as passion, but it's also work. And mm-hmm. I think that's what we're all seeking is to be able to live our life, make money by doing something actually that we enjoy because it comes naturally, doesn't it, when that's yes. the case. So feel very fortunate that that I found it early on and um, yeah. was able to 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 have the doors open to to allow me to to sort of go after it and seek it. So it's yeah. been fun. That's been really good. And thank you to our audience. If you learned something today or you laughed, or uh, maybe we inspired you, please tell someone about the EO Atlanta Taking Flight podcast. But thank you once again, Randy. Thank you so much, Sarah. This was great. Great. It's been another exciting episode of EO Atlanta's Taking Flight, and I look forward to seeing everybody next time. And so that wraps up another episode. Thank you for joining. For show notes and other episodes, visit us at takingflight.live. For more information about EO Atlanta, visit eoatlanta.org. Special thanks to the following sponsors.